This is by far one of the most secret and at the same time disreputable projects, which led to a grandiose scandal between the United States and the USSR, and to the emergence of a huge amount of a lot of various presumptions and speculations. Although it all started fairly typical for that time, on February 24th of 1968, the submarine of the Pacific Fleet of the Soviet Union, K-129, tail number 574, left the port of Kamchatka. The boat carried two nuclear torpedoes and three ballistic missiles also equipped with nuclear warheads. The missiles had gigantic power and were intended for underwater launch. For the first 12 days, the submarine clearly followed a pre-planned route to the patrol zone. But on March 8th, during the next passage of the control point, the crew did not get in touch. At the same time, military intelligence reported that the American submarine Swordfish appeared in the Japanese port of Yokosuka. The submarine had pronounced traces of damage, which involuntarily made the command of the Pacific Fleet to think about the accident of its own submarine. On top of that, the American boat was being repaired in conditions of enhanced secrecy, which meant that something quite serious happened during the campaign with the Swordfish. Over the next two months, warships, submarines, auxiliary vessels, and air transport of the Pacific Fleet of the USSR conducted a search operation for the K-129 submarine. But despite that, it was possible to find only a huge spot of diesel fuel. The boat itself and the crash site could not be found no matter what. The leaders of the project considered that the submarine was destroyed, and all data about this case was immediately ordered to classify. One of the primary versions of the death of the submarine is an unintentional ramming by Swordfish. But up to the present time there is no official from the United States confirmation of this version, nor an official refutation. Indirectly, this version is indicated by the certainty that in US they clearly knew the place of death of the Soviet submarine. And when the search operations on the part of the USSR were stopped, one of the most secret and ultra-modern ships for that time of the US Navy, Mazar, urgently went there. The vessel carried on with the task by establishing the place of death of the Soviet boat and even photographing it. The submarine lay at the bottom, almost on an even keel, and between the second and third compartments, a narrow and deep hole was observable. Well, for the United States, obviously torpedoes and missiles, as well as an encryption machine, were of great interest. Moreover, the latter was in the very first place, as it made it possible to study the ciphers of Soviet ships and consequently learn how to decipher them. That being the case, the American CIA developed a top-secret operation codenamed Project Jennifer. In total, more than 4,000 people were involved in the implementation of the project, as well as the Glomer Explorer platform vessel and the NV-1 pontoon dock were specially built. The secrecy of the project was such that even the engineers involved in the construction of the platform could not understand its intention. The vessel could be kept afloat at one point with waves up to seven points with an accuracy of 10 centimeters according to the coordinates. For that time, it was incredible and simply dazzling accuracy. More so, a well was installed in the bottom of the vessel, in which a pontoon dock was placed, which had a carrying capacity of about 800 tons, which was also both amazing and beyond comprehension. For the sole purpose of hiding the real motive of the vessel, the US intelligence services launched a massive disinformation campaign of the Soviet Union. For example, already in November of 1970, Soviet intelligence reported that Glomer 2 was searching for oil in the Aleutian Islands. But in reality, the secret Glomer Explorer at that time was in a completely different place, and in order to confuse intelligence, the CIA actively used outwardly similar Glomer vessels for cover. In July of 1973, the Glomer Explorer was launched, and a year later it was discovered in the Hawaiian Islands, not far from the site of the death of a Soviet submarine. By the way, drawing attention to the incomprehensible activity of the vessel, the intelligence of the Pacific Fleet turned to the commander to send a ship to the explorer zone of operation for observation. In that way, the head of the intelligence department reported to the commander. As maintained by the accumulated signs, Glomer Explorer is completing the preparatory cycle of work on lifting the PL-574. For now, it's unclear how they will raise it, but they are preparing. The most important feature is the change in the nature of the ship's radio traffic the transition from the Glomer radio network to hidden satellite communication channels. I ask you to allocate a warship. However, after receiving a categorical refusal, intelligence was able to send only the Chasma ship measuring complex. It was able to record that Glomer Explorer is carrying out work that looks like preparation for drilling. That is, Chasma could not establish the true goal. 
In essence, the purpose of the ship was completely different. At the same exact time, the Glomer Explorer had already begun lifting the submarine. By a fatal coincidence, almost at the very end of the scaling, the boat broke through a hole, and the compartments from the third to the eighth rushed to the bottom. Together with them, ballistic missiles were forever lost for U.S. intelligence. But it didn't stop the process. As mentioned above, the most attractive was to a greater extent the encryption machine, which was located in the second commander's compartment, where the encryption post of the submarine was located. And there were also torpedoes, which were also incredibly interesting to study. The captured part of the boat was taken to the port of Honolulu, where the bodies of six Soviet submariners were recovered. Here it must be said that the Americans buried the dead people in strict accordance with maritime traditions. The bodies were sealed in a metal box, covered with the flag of the Soviet Union and, to the sounds of the anthem of the USSR and a military salute, were buried at sea. The funeral procedure was also filmed, which later was an uninterrupted proof that the Americans succeeded in the almost impossible. But then US intelligence received, per chance, one of the worst disappointments. Having spent a total of $350 million on the project, the CIA received torpedoes with nuclear warheads and documentation as trophies. But the most important thing, the encryption machine, could not be found. But the reason turned out to be quite suspenseful. The fact is that before going on a hike, the boat commander decided to expand his cabin, second compartment. And for this, it was necessary to move the encryption post to another space. The commander agreed with the dock workers to move and remount the encryption post in the fourth compartment. An investigation conducted within the USSR by intelligence and state security agencies showed that the commander paid for the work with several liters of alcohol. Yes, it was not possible to completely maintain secrecy, and soon there were reports in the press about the raising of the Soviet submarine by the US Navy. Despite the fact that neither the USSR nor the United States reacted in any way to such reports, titanic and simply uncontrolled work took place within the relevant departments. It is known that after the first reports to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, the commander of the USSR Navy, Admiral Gorshkov, was invited. Without any doubt, the high authorities were not themselves. Afterwards, returning to headquarters, the admiral summoned the commander of the Pacific Fleet and the head of the intelligence department for proceedings. The latter, in his memoirs, quoted the full dialogue that took place in the admiral's office. Well, intelligence, it seems like you f***ed up and lost the submarine. Or what is it? No, not at all, comrade commander. We didn't f*** everything up. We took all possible measures in our part. And it's not our fault that neither the commander nor the higher headquarters took measures to counter the Americans. And apart from that, this is no longer a matter for our part, but for operators in command. And how can you confirm this? Yes, um, we have the whole folder of materials. Okay, come on. Bring your folder in here, now. In reality, there were no special complaints against the head of the intelligence. It has already been said that it was he who asked to send the ship to patrol. Further actions of the Soviet side were quite logical and understandable. Several ships were sent to the submarine sinking zone. In addition, a categorical order was given by any means to prevent the Americans from conducting a second operation to raise the fragments of the boat. Moreover, in extreme cases, it was even allowed to shell the area by aviation. And while the military carried out the order, Soviet and American diplomats entered into a lengthy correspondence and exchanging notes of protest. The first protest of the Soviet side was about the alleged violation of international laws in terms of the secret raising of the ship. In response to this, American diplomats categorically denied the claims of the Soviet Union. Since there was no official announcement on this matter from American side, the boat is no bodies, and anyone has any right to raise it and generally do whatever they want. Then Soviet diplomats made a rather ugly passage, saying that the Americans had abused the ashes of the dead sailors. The total crew of the submarine was 98 people, and here the video recording of the funeral of six sailors recovered in Honolulu came in handy. After that incident, mutual claims came to zero, and the place of the submarine death was patrolled for another six months by the Soviet side. And the American government commanded the CIA to stop all further attempts to get to the dead submarine, so as not to complicate relations with the USSR. And that was the end of the Operation Jennifer. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy our episodes. Leave a like and subscribe and also expect new episodes on the channel. See you later.